everyone. Welcome to the Horror Show. I'm Cecil Laird. I'm producer Dave. Here to review a monster movie that I watched a long time ago that Dave probably watched even longer ago. Mm -hmm. uh, but I've been wanting to talk about it. It's not quite fully horror, yeah. but it definitely is a monster movie. It's The Great Wall, starring Matt Damon. <laughs> um, it is actually, a lot of people don't like this movie. It is yeah. not very well received. But I will say, again, we, for our reviews, we do our overall thoughts, then the story, the acting, the effects, all that good stuff in turn. And... The fact that everyone was hating on it so bad, my expectations were really low going into it. Yeah. So I enjoyed it for what it was. Yeah. Like it didn't I think that helped me too. It didn't need to be anything yeah. deeper than we got because it was not a deep movie at no. all. The the story was very thin. Yeah. But seen it before. knowing that, yeah, I've seen it before, but knowing actually not even quite though. Not not as a creature fan like me, uh, not but, I mean, well, but you the have, plot, the foreigner soldier falling in love with blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Well, yeah. Well, they didn't even really do the love stuff that much. Mm -hmm. This is, so bit. So the story overall, well, okay. Well, overall thoughts, I enjoyed it more than I thought I was going to. I it's not. Too. It's not great, but I'd give it maybe C plus, B minus. Yeah, B minus would be, I would go with B minus. Um, but yeah, it definitely wasn't an F that everyone thinks or says it is. No, so. it wasn't terrible. Uh, the story is uh, Matt Damon and uh, uh, Pedro Pascal play two European mercenaries um, that are trying to smuggle stolen gunpowder and they basically are being chased and they run afoul of a creature in the desert um, in China yep. and uh, they end up being able to kill the creature right. and they sever its arm and take it with them um, just to kind of prove what they had and they get to the Great Wall where there is this giant Chinese army like they're waiting and they don't have any idea really why because yeah. there's not like a big war going on that they know about they're taken inside as prisoners um, and they find out that uh, the, the Chinese military has set up this entire defense along the Great Wall because apparently once every certain number of years, I think they said, years. is it a thousand or a hundred? I, I thought it was a, a thousand years, but it could have been a hundred It could years. have been a century, but uh, basically they get attacked. Yeah, we can scroll a little lower. You can feel free to look. Yeah. Um, the, so they get attacked every certain number of years by this horde of creatures that they call the Tao Te. Tao Te. And um, they're, they're awesome. They're, they're they are quadrupedal very quadrupedal cool. creatures. Yeah. A um, little insecty, a little bit? Kind of a, a little, little bit. insecty. They're actually very reminiscent of the creature in... Um, Outlander. Okay. Um, uh, they reminded me of the creature from uh, Starship Troopers a little bit. Okay. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. They Well, they weren't quite as insect-like, right. but they had But, that, but that's they had kind of remind sort of me of that sort of like hive features. mind. Yeah, thing like that. Yeah. yeah. Um, so they're, they're pretty cool um, as far as design goes, at least in my opinion. They're all CG, of course. Yeah. Um, there's a couple of maybe, you know, half heads that have been cut off that they made practical in order yeah. for actors to hold or whatever. But otherwise, the creatures are largely CG. Well, and I was going to say, uh, once you accept that fact that the monsters are going to, it's going to be mass CG, mm -hmm. I actually was able to enjoy it. Yeah. Because usually that draws me out of a film when I know that the whole scene's CG. But I just accepted it for this film. I was, you know. Well, here's the I thing. I was bored. I really wanted something to entertain me. So I just allowed my suspension of disbelief to walk in and, and sit down and I enjoyed it. The CG monsters. Well, and the majority of the monster shots are thousands of monsters. Yeah. Like, it's lots Mass. of them attacking. And here's the thing. Having a thousand CG monsters is no different than the Lord of the Rings that had a thousand CG right. soldiers. Orcs. Yeah, yeah, orcs, whatever. Like, that's all CG, too. Yeah. Like, they didn't have that many people on the battlefield. So, right. um, it's, not, it's not far off of that. And if you can be okay with it, then you're going to have a good enough time. Um, and it turns out that the creatures are largely drones. Yep. There are queens that they kind of protect. Again, where I got the insect thing from. Yeah, okay, that that's sort fair. sort of hive mind, sure. like, the queen is controlling all of them. Yeah, that is true, that is true. So, it's about, um, so, basically, the, the, the two mercenaries show the Chinese soldiers that they've got this arm, they killed a monster, and so they kind of are hesitantly let run free among the wall. They're not set free, right. but they're allowed to help with the defense of the wall. Yeah. Um, and so they do. And well, there's... it's your typical plot point where the foreign, the the Chinese government or whatever, the, the authority of China has to accept these foreigners as, you know, who they are and also that they can possibly help. Well, them. they were going to put them to death, but then when they produced the arm and showed that they had killed a creature, they're like, oh, these guys might be able to help, but some Chinese soldiers don't want them to. Yeah. Some do. There is, of course, the female, the lead female right. one. But that's when we get to, you know, the um, the, the crazy awesome um, action scenes. And the reason I say they're crazy awesome, or at least some of them are crazy awesome, is the, the, the way they do the Chinese army's attacks and defenses 
are so cool, yeah. and it's it's very there's a lot of wushu. Well, it's very crouching tiger, hidden yeah. dragon, but fighting creatures. Right. Like they have they have these bungee jumping. Like sword slinging females with like streamers on Bungie themselves. Bungee jumping sword swinging females. It's Why cool. can you not yeah. watch this movie? Like seriously, the creatures <laughs> like pile on each other like the zombies in World War Z and climbing up the wall, and they just literally dive down and they slice some stuff up and get pulled back up doing flips and stuff, and then they go back down. But it's but they don't. But the movie doesn't shy away from the right. violence because there's creatures that jump up and grab them nope. and eat them yeah. and like tear them apart and stuff like that. Like they don't shy away from that yeah. stuff. So, the action is 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 fun. Yeah, and I, and that's the thing. It's, it's not fun. a deep story because that's literally all it is. Right. The mercenaries helping the Chinese with wave after wave of creatures attack, and can they take out a queen and stop the whole thing for you know until the next millennia or whenever right. the next century? Well, I have um, maybe we'll well I'll push this to the end, but I have a whole deeper thought to the plot. Okay. Um, but we'll we'll, we'll maybe save, save that, that to the, the end. end. Okay, we'll save it to the end. Um, so let's just. I mean, we've already been reviewing it, so let's just dive into it. I mean, the special effects were great. Yeah. I, I didn't think that um, the creatures were not scary. I didn't find them that scary, but I, I thought it, they were a good opponent, and they felt weighted and, and, and everything like that. It was that. thrilling. Yeah. It was thrilling. There was a lot of times when the creatures made it into the wall, and there was one specifically that was up attacking, and then snap, there was a lot of snap, snap, snap right behind yeah. people and stuff like that. I love that kind yeah. of stuff. And I mean, like I said before, if you gotta, you know, you kind of have to just go for the ride rather than try to get logic involved. Right. So uh, there was like definitely towards the end, I was I was thinking to myself, oh, okay, this is how they're gonna end it. Right. But um, that being said, I still really enjoyed uh, not only Matt Damon's character but Pedro Pascal. Mm -hmm. He's awesome in Narcos. I don't yep. know if you guys have watched that, yep. but he's really good, and he he kind of plays the foil. And then William Defoe shows up. William Defoe, yeah. Willem, sorry. I don't know why everyone does that. I don't. I don't I, frankly, I don't know what's I right, but I believe it's yeah, Willem. But anyway, so Willem Defoe shows up, and he's like, "Hey, well, I tried to do this stealing the gunpowder thing twenty years ago. Mm -hmm. Now that you guys are here, we can really do it." Mm -hmm. You know. And so there's that sort of whole subplot that I, I kind of like it just was fizzles, like though. Well, no, I thought it was kind of good because it give it gives Matt Damon the opportunity to show that he's like he's a good guy. Mm -hmm. Okay, like he's the hero. He like he'll put aside his own personal like fortune to help save China. That's true. And I think that leads to what I was gonna say later on. With okay, the deeper story that's going on here. Um. um so yeah, I mean. The, we the might as well. Was good. Yeah, the acting was okay. I mean, it's it's Matt Damon with a really shitty accent. I don't like his accent at all. Like, yeah, it's it was really really bad. No, every time he give, delivers a line that you giggle at, you should probably drink. Yeah, it, it could be. Yeah, that. Yes, <laughs> but it is still Matt Damon. Yeah. So when he's not talking, it, it's still kind of fun to watch. Yeah, uh, Pedro Pascal is more fun to watch yeah. to me because he's a bit less noble. Yeah, uh, as it were. He he just he just makes me feel like he's like this, you know. Latin, you know, kind of like suave, yes, yeah, suave, he's, sort of like villainous. he talks his way out of stuff. He fucking he'll slit your throat if he yeah. has to in a mm -hmm. bar. Mm -hmm. He and he's got he's done that in movies. Yeah, I'm and sure. then the lead uh, Jing Tao Tian, where's Jing, it? Jing Tian, I think that's how you say it. She's good. She plays sort oh, of yeah. like the princess yeah. in a way. Yeah, and she. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm, that, that's part of my whole theory. That you know? reluctantly sort of allows them but, to help. But mm -hmm. also recognizes their value. True. She's the one who recognizes their value, but also, you know, she has to fight the sort of uh, bureaucracy of the Chinese mm -hmm. five, I think it's five groups. You yeah. might be right. I can't remember for sure, yeah. That's one of the things I really liked is <clears throat> they sort of se separated all the different styles of fighting. So there were there were wall divers, there were the spear, archers, there were the archers, mm -hmm. and they all had different colors and everything like that. And that was yeah, I beautiful. really liked that. Yeah, it the, felt the, 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 yes, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, no, go ahead. Production design. Yeah, like production I really design. felt yeah. that 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 sort of like they they encompassed everything in the production design. They, they made they made a concentrated effort to be like team archers, team spearmen, team blue, team red, team purple. purple. Yeah, and so and it was kind of fun in that sense because. Again, leading to the little deeper thing that I think is going on here, China has a very large population, and and, and everybody wants to fit in. Mm -hmm. And I think the Great Wall is like one of those things where like it was built more of a transportation hub. Like people think of it as a wall, but it was really the first freeway. Yeah. And and so to, the idea that oh uh, no, it was actually built for this mythical creature battles, I think is really cool. Yeah. I think it's a way of China making their history like finding a way like national treasure for us yeah finding a way to have fun with their national history and and make it 
fictional. And uh, um, but also the same as um, Da Vinci Code, right? And stuff like that. Yeah, and, and and to incorporate their culture into allowing foreigners in, which is mm-hmm. again, it's going to lead me to what I think is the deeper plot that's going on okay. in the Great Wall. Well, we we both clearly enjoyed the movie more yeah. than most. Um, we we don't claim it to be the best movie ever by any stretch, but we think there's enough enjoyable in it that it's worth a watch. Yeah. Um, so to that end, if you guys don't want to be spoiled, I'm not sure if Dave's thing is going to spoil it or not, but feel free to call it there. No, but go it ahead, Dave. It, okay, my, my thing won't spoil theory? it. Go ahead. So I have a deeper theory about this film. Um, I think that we um, the 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 studio money that exists in California and New York and everything like that. They're trying to find a way to break into China. Mm-hmm. They're trying to find a way to get a new billion people well, they're not to trying. watch. They've already done it. Well, but that's between the thing. this and Godzilla and Meg. Well, see, that's the whole, the whole great wall mm-hmm. of penetrating China, is that the Chinese government censors and, and 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 requires studios to censor their films so that nothing negative portrays China. Nothing, um, you know, it's it's kind of a weird thing that they that they do mm-hmm. uh, with the censorship. And so the Great Wall, I believe, is a greater metaphor for this censorship. That the culture of America is that every citizen deserves a free and um, um, business. Like, everybody gets a chance to be a billionaire uh, in America, right? Even though none of us are going to get it. But everybody gets that chance. Mm -hmm. And in China, that's the wall, the barrier they put up. They're like, look, everybody can't be rich. So we got to keep everybody, you know, controlled. And I think what, what the Great Wall is sort of like saying is that when America came in in the 70s and introduced this idea of we can fight back, we can resist, and maybe these new ideas are something you can incorporate into your culture mm-hmm. without destroying your culture. Mm-hmm. And I think that's what this movie is... I don't know if it was trying to say this, but I think that's what it said to me, was that, look, China is a mega country Mm -hmm. uh culture that's existed far longer than america has and the idea that we could dictate to them how to be and and how to react to certain things is is folly so i think that's what the the movie kind of told to me that is was that was that you know look hey there's a billion of them there's two of us there's two westerners who show up and say hey you know maybe we fight it this way Mm -hmm. and maybe we win and we can all be a, a a team together and i think that's really at the heart why I enjoyed this film because it appealed to me on that political sense but also it was a really fun action-y you know like I said I had akin to Starship Troopers Mm -hmm. when I was watching this film I felt a lot like Star Trek they were against this overwhelming horde horde, Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and the odds were against them and you felt like this was going to be one of those films where they all died at the end of the kill crew but it was so cool it was like the ballet of violence it was it was really well done and like I said before I think that a lot of people miss this sort of like the storytellers are trying to tell us this this underlying political drama that's going on between America and China, and I think this is one of those films that kind of sums it all up and and breaks those sort of like hey, this is literally there's a wall we cannot get into China China can come out no problem but we can't get into China we're the horde, <laughs> the American horde trying to free the Chinese people but the Chinese government is like well. Listen, if they're all free, then they're all going to start, you know, we're we like, have a real chaotic problem. Here. We're a year and a half late on this review, but I guarantee no other review has touched on this like Davis. So, hey, this is why I don't do a lot of reviews. <laughs> I enjoyed it. No, yeah. I like it. I like it. It's, it's definitely an added level that I don't have, which yeah. is why I want him on like war stuff yeah. and things like that. Well, that's, that's what he knows about. That's one of the things that I enjoyed about it is that like, look, you can just look at it like a movie look at it from the political dimensions that are going on in the world and when this was released and and the whole deal with like Meg coming out the idea that these Chinese studios are trying to get American big budget films Mm -hmm. but the government is like hey but but you gotta portray us in a good light you can't make the Chinese the bad guys Mm -hmm. you know the Chinese government can't be the bad guy so there's this whole balance that's going on and I think the Great Wall is is a perfect analogy of that balance that we're trying to penetrate this huge market for our ideas that are, you know, and our ideas and our in our and our culture, mm-hmm. without destroying their culture. Okay. All right. Well, there you go, guys. My take, my opinion. <laughs> So that's going to do it for our review of The Great Wall starring Matt Damon. Let us know in the comments down below what you thought of it. I know we might not have changed a lot of minds. I could be completely full of shit. If I am, let me know in the comments below. (laughs) I'm sure they will. (laughs) If that's, if they, maybe they're like, I never thought about 
Yeah. Well, you know, hey. we'll see. We'll see how it goes. Um, so let us know in the comments down I mean, below. Let, hey, I just noticed this. Max Brooks helped write this story. He's great. Max Brooks wrote World War Z, mm -hmm. and the book World War Z is much better than the film. Well, Max Brooks is a great writer. A great he, he wrote writer. he wrote an outstanding nine issue comic book series called The Green Valley. Yeah, um, he is. Um, I think he gets it. Really I think that's why I picked up on this whole sub, you know subliminal political drama mm -hmm. that's going on, mm -hmm. and I think that's one of the things that I think you have to look for it rather than have it pop in your face. Yeah. All right. Well, that's going to do it, guys. Thanks very much for watching. Until next time, I've been Cecil Laird. I'm the Great Wall Dave. <laughs> and remember, stay, stay scared. scared. Or just jump over the wall.